Hi everyone, today I will talk about the cell, chapter 2, cell chemistry and biosynthesis. This chapter is too big to do it in one go, so I split it up in three parts. This is part 1, the chemical compounds of a cell. An atom consists of neutrons, protons and electrons. The electron shell can cause chemical bonds. There are two forms ionic and covalent bonds. The covalent bond shares electrons while in the ionic bonds the negative ion will receive all the electrons. A covalent bond can be formed by oxygen, nitrogen and carbon. Molecules formed from these atoms have precise three-dimensional structures. A structure can be specified by the bond's angles and bond lengths of each covalent linkage. There are three different types of covalent bonds, single bonds, double bonds and polar covalent bonds. Single bonds share two electrons, double bonds share four electrons, and polar covalent bonds share the electrons unequally due to positive charge concentration on one side and negative on the other side. These are also called dipoles. An atom often behaves as a fixed radius due to van der Waals forces. Atoms cannot come closer at a certain point. This is called van der Waals radius. Hydrogen bonds is another force. It is the electrical attraction between two water molecules that come closer. The positive H atom and negative O atoms will attract each other. Hydrophobic forces are not bonds, but are forces between nonpolar or hydrophobic surface that is pushed to each other to keep the water out. Hydrophobic molecules don't like water and hydrophilic molecules like water. So we have covalent bonds, non-covalent bonds, ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces and hydrophobic forces are non-covalent. To visualize how these bonds work is shown in this picture. Two proteins will fit exactly due to the bonds and the shape. Also, the non-covalent bond helps to shape a protein via bonds between the protein itself. The cell contains four major families of small organic molecules, sugar, fatty acids, amino acids, and nucleotides. These are the building blocks of the cell whereby polysaccharides, fats, lipids, membranes, proteins, and nucleic acids are formed. Sugar also provides energy for the cell. Each sugar has two forms, D and I forms. They are mirror images of each other. Molecules with the same chemical formula but different structures are called isomers. Isomers play a major part in an enormous variety of sugars. When two sugars are attached to each other, you have a disaccharide. Larger sugar polymers are oligosaccharides, and a thousand of monosaccharide units form a polysaccharide. These saccharides are formed by condensation reaction. A bond is formed between OH group of one sugar and an OH group of another. Water is expelled. Water is added. This is also called the hydrolysis. Fatty acids have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. In the membrane, the hydrophobic tails are pointed to each other to expel the water. This is also called the lipid bilayer. There are two forms of tails, saturated and unsaturated. When it is saturated, it has no double bonds between carbon atoms. Unsaturated tails have one or more double bonds between the carbon atoms. Amino acids all have carboxylic acid group and an amino group, both linked to a single carbon atom. Many amino acids attached to form a protein. When amino acids are linked, a peptide bond is formed. 
all proteins have an N-terminus at one end, the NH2 group, and a C-terminus at the other end, in the COOH group. Nucleotides contain a phosphate, sugar, and a base. The base is a nitrogen containing ring, and different forms exist. Pyrimidines are cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Purina are guanine and adenine. The difference is that pyrimidine contains one ring and purina contains two rings. Nucleotides serve as building blocks for DNA or RNA. DNA contains the bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. RNA contains the bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. The difference between DNA and RNA is that RNA miss an oxygen. This was part one. Stay tuned for part two.